Hi, welcome to another video. So, Windsurf recently launched, and I used it quite a bit, and it was quite cool to use. I've been using it for a while after that, just to test how well it performs, and to be honest, it has been the greatest AI editor that I have seen yet. Recently, it got some new upgrades, and I want to talk about it as well. I'll also tell you about some new quirks, the right way to use its features, some stuff that I found very interesting, the things I really like about it, and what makes it the literal best AI editor that I have seen yet. So, before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Ninja Chat. Paying for models from different providers costs a lot of money these days, but you can save a lot of money on your membership costs by using Ninja Chat. It gives you access to latest models from Anthropic, OpenAI, Gemini, and even image or video generation models like Flux and Kling, all in one place, for a price that just starts from $11. They have a bunch of tools to use these models in intricate ways, like the AI Playground feature, which allows you to compare multiple models in one place by sending one prompt to multiple models from multiple providers, which is really great. They also have a bunch of other tools as well, like writing tools, a mind map generator, and even a new artifacts feature. So, you can check them out through the link in the description, and make sure to use my coupon code KING25 to get an additional 25% off these already great deals now. Let's first talk about the new stuff they have added to the AI editor. First of all, they have extended the trial up until December 11th. So, that's super cool, and you can enjoy it for free until that time. Apart from this, there have been some new updates to it. So, the first recent release added an option for Cascade to explain and fix problems on the go, just like what Klein does. It can basically detect linting errors and fix them itself, or you can also right-click on a linting error and fix it. You also get the Import from Cursor option to migrate extensions and settings from Cursor. You also have some new key bindings that allow you to accept all active diffs in a file with a shortcut key mapped to Command or Control plus Enter by default. There's also a similar key binding to reject all active diffs in a file. It maps to command or control plus backspace by default. Apart from this, the major new upgrade is that it now allows for image uploads. This was a very much requested feature, and I was missing it a lot because I use images frequently in my prompts since they help guide the generation a lot. Now, it finally supports image uploads. So, this is amazing. There are also new key bindings to navigate between changes in a cascade diff. If you are familiar with Vim, then these will be pretty self-explanatory. The Option or Alt plus J or K will go back or forward between each diff change, while the Option plus H or I will navigate between changed files. So, this is great. Now let me show you the new things it has, and the major features of it that I have been using, which seem extremely cool to me. So, first of all, this is Windsurf here. It's basically VS Code, because it's forked from it, but it has AI features, which is what makes it an AI editor. The major thing that does that is Cascade. You can see this icon on the top, which opens it up, or for quick access, you can open it by using Command plus L. The keyboard shortcuts are something you should remember because they make everything very snappy. So, here you can see Cascade. This is where you do all your stuff. Here, you can enter your tasks, and because it's an agentic system, it will automatically edit your files and make changes. All you need to do is sit back and hit the Approve options. They have now added the New Image option here, which allows you to add images with your prompt and let it also see them. 
it is a really good option because using images as a reference generally yields much better results, which is amazing. You also have the Write and Chat option. Now, the Write option basically means that you are allowing it to write and make changes, while the Read option only allows you to chat with it. Apart from this, you have the model options, including GPT-4.0, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and Cascade Base. You always just need to use Claude 3.5 Sonnet because it's the best. Now let's send a prompt here. I have this basic Next.js application here. So, let's upload a simple wireframe for a calendar app. Once you send it, you'll see that it starts generating the stuff. Now, this takes a bit, obviously, so let's wait a bit. And it's now done. So, it created the files here. Now, you can approve everything here. But one thing it also has is the ability to approve a specific diff from the whole thing. I haven't seen this in anything else yet. What it allows is that you can either approve everything or go through each diff with option plus J or K and approve or reject each set of diffs. I like this a lot because you don't need to redo a file from scratch if you dislike just one thing. So, this is great for sure, and I haven't seen this option in other AI editors yet. So, this is great. Now, once you have approved stuff, another thing you can do is generate commands inside the terminal. For example, if you don't know how to run the NPM server, you can hit command plus I, and it will give you the option to ask it to do something. Once you type it in, you'll get the command to run, and then you can accept, reject, or directly run it. This is great, although it's a little overkill for running an NPM server. But this is great to use if you use something like FFmpeg that has those long commands. This is something I didn't cover in the last video, so I thought to share it here. Now, I have it running, and this is what it looks like. So, this looks pretty good. Although there are some issues like the font and things, and this is where the image feature comes in handy. Because these things get hard to tell in a prompt, you can take a screenshot of this, add it to Windsurf, and then with some basic prompts, ask it to make this better. Once you do that, you'll get much better results because it now also has a visual reference. Now, it's done. And if we look at it, you can see that it's now fixed. So, this is a great option for sure. Using images was a big roadblock in using Windsurf, but now it's added, and it's really great. I really think that it's insanely better than Cursor. Apart from this, you also have the Explain and Fix option. So, if you hover over any errors, you'll see this option. If you click it, it will take the context of the error and try to fix it in Cascade. This is a good option, although it doesn't work as great for me. So, there's that. Another thing I wanted to mention is that you should also use the Refactor option. In each file, you'll see these options at the top, which are Explain, Refactor, and Add DocString. I use Refactor and DocString. Refactor will open a dialog that allows you to give any prompt and it will refactor the code in the file according to that prompt. This comes in handy when Cascade is overkill for changing some stuff in one page. This is great for that. The doc string is also good for adding comments. You also have the inline assist apart from it as well. The reason I'm saying that you should not always use Cascade is that it has a limit of 1,000 Cascade steps per month. Now, I do think that for the price of $10, it is justifiable. One prompt you give takes about five steps on average. From what I understand, the steps are basically the blocks of analysis or file edits you see. So, on average, you can run about 200 prompts in Cascade. Plus, this limit doesn't include the stuff you do in inline assist, as it's unlimited. So, 
For things that only need to be done in one file, you can use Inline Assist, which is unlimited, and save your cascade limits for bigger tasks involving multiple files. This plan is insanely better than cursors because the technology in Windsurf is vastly superior. I've tried Cursor, and it's just so bad in comparison. Plus, you get 500 requests in Cursor for premium models, which include the inline assist stuff and anything inside the editor that makes requests to that model. Compared to Windsurf, it's insanely better because you get unlimited inline assists and an average of 250 cascade requests, similar to Cursor's Composer agent, which also makes multiple requests. Not just that, I believe the free version is also really good. You can just switch from VS Code to it, get the AI features for free, and install something like Klein or Ader if you want more agentic features without paying. So, I believe Windsurf is the top AI editor right now, and nothing comes close at the price it offers, with an amazing free tier. You don't need to mess around with installing extensions for autocomplete and stuff. So, this is amazing for sure. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then. Bye.